Well, good afternoon, Mount Pisgah. Glad to have you back with us for our midweek Bible study. Everyone who is watching, we're going to be in Acts chapters 1 and 2. Just going to read a couple of verses from each of those chapters as we talk about the regathering. Before I get to that, I want to talk about gathering, and I hope that you'll visit with us this Sunday at 10 o'clock in the parking lot of Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. It's at 661 Mount Pisgah Road. We'd love to have you come and join us for our time of worship. You know, there's a lot of talk these days about regathering. That's a controversy, in fact, over the subject of having um, coming back to in-person worship. Should we or should we not uh, return to that? And the answer to that question is obvious. It's up to the individual churches. One thing that, though, uh, many people have learned in this pandemic, which you know just started this year, is that the church is uh, no longer seen as the buildings where we meet. We've preached that, taught that. For many many years but it's really becoming a reality today as we see the church is, is the people people who know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior and it really doesn't matter how we meet whether you're in a building or online like you are today watching this service or you're sitting out in the parking lot of your church we are the church. And we are still called, even in this pandemic, to come together and to forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. We can't, we can't um, undo that, that word. So we still come together, and we come together for the same reasons. We, hear, we come together to hear the word of God. We come together to encourage each other. And again, even if it's in a parking lot church and you stay in your car, we see you and, and we love that uh, about it. So we encourage you to, to do that. You know, one of the first activities of the early church that we see in the book of Acts is gathering. In chapter 1, verse 14, it says, They all continued with one accord in prayer and in supplication. So, that one of the reasons the church came together was to pray and to uh, make petitions for one another. Chapter 2, verse 1 says they all joined together constantly in prayer. And then at the end of chapter 2, it says every day they continue to meet together in the temple court. So we see an emphasis in these first chapters um, of coming together. There the, the first couple of chapters of the book of Acts are saturated with descriptions of communal uh, gatherings of the first followers of Jesus Christ. Do you think that they had buildings in which they met? Uh, there at the end of chapter 2, it said that they would meet in the synagogues, but for the most part, they met in and around a home. Many of their gatherings were outside in the open air. So from the very beginning, we see that the church was in the habit of gathering together. But why? Why do we gather? We're going to look today at a few reasons for gathering together. And the first one is when we gather, we're part of something bigger than ourselves. There are many people that have it in their thought an idea that says, I need Jesus, but I don't need the church. Well, here's the thing. Salvation isn't just about making a personal decision. It starts there, but it's so much more. Salvation is about becoming like Jesus and in participating in God's plan of salvation for the world. The point of the church is to share with the world the news that Jesus is Lord and that he is ushering in the kingdom of God. Uh, and we just get to be a part of that. Well, that's why we gather. 
it reminds us that we're part of something bigger than ourselves. And we long for that, don't we? We all want to be a part of something bigger, something that reaches beyond us, something that is going to make a radical difference in the world and, and in the lives of people, something that will continue long after we are gone. We all want to be a part of something that matters, something that is making a difference. Beloved, the church matters. The world is a broken place in need of a church. The church is the hope of the world. Nobody else embodies Christ. Nothing else has the power of God through the Holy Spirit. And nothing else is meant to be God's instrument of love and salvation for the world. Well, secondly, we gather because when we gather, we're unified in Christ. Now, let's face it, there's a lot of division in our world today. And division becomes because of the diversity of all the people that are around us. This world is a kaleidoscope of backgrounds and beliefs and opinions, even physical characteristics and skills. So often it's that diversity of thought and belief that divides. But see, that's not what God intended. And that's not what the church is to be about. Romans chapter 15, verse 5 and 6, God, six God's word says, Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another, according to Christ Jesus. Verse 6 says that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The reason there's so much division in the world is that everyone's fighting for their own agenda. But when we gather in the name of the one true God and the one Savior, and we commit to his mission for our lives, suddenly we're part of something much bigger than ourselves. But we have the glue of a common mission, and that calls us beyond what divides it unites us in a common identity as children of God, the common mission in Jesus Christ. We gather in spite of our differences because we're unified in Christ. We're so different, and yet we find communion in the resurrected Christ. It's in these moments that I'm reminded we serve a really big God, a God who unites us, in our uniqueness and, and in spite of our diversity of opinion, in spite of our beliefs and in spite of our backgrounds. So we, we have that reason to gather. We can be bigger than what we are. Thirdly, when we gather, God shows up. The psalmist said in Psalm chapter 22, verse 3, he said, God inhabits the praise of his people. When we gather and we praise God, the presence of God meets us in a very unique way that doesn't happen when we try to do that on our own. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm all for private, intimate times of personal worship. You've heard me teach the importance of that. I think, in fact, that's crucial. But the presence of God meets us in such a mysterious way when we come together. Uh -huh. I can hear somebody say right now, now preacher, I can experience God in a great way out there on the lake while I'm fishing. And I say, yes, you can. You can do that. But not like you can when you come together with like believers in unity and you lift up the name of Jesus. When we gather together, we encounter God in the very presence of God, meets us in our praises. We can and we have experienced that in our church as we gather to worship God with our drive-in services, with our online services. I hear testimonies from people um, from far, far away, as well as close by that, that really enjoy it. 
the drive-in services have been very, very well received and people are glad to have that. Beloved, when we come together as one, it isn't really something you can explain. It's something you have to experience. Nothing is like coming together as the church. And we gather to remind ourselves that we are a part of something big. And it exposes us to the bigger picture of God, to experience the very presence of God. God created the world in such a way that everything operates better in unity than it does individually. We experience things on a deeper level when we are part of a group than we would if we were just on our own. The Word of God says, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, tells us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. According to that, even back in the first century church, there were some people who just would not come together in a group to worship. And then the writer of Hebrews tells us why we should do it, why we should not not do it. He says, but exhorting one another and so much the more as we see the day approaching. When we gather together, we're able to experience certain things that we can't when we're on our own. We encourage one another as we see others coming together to worship. We encourage the pastor when we show up and, and come and be a part of that Bible study or that, that worship service. It is an encouragement to everyone. I have one more thought. We gather together because we can do more when we gather together. Uh, Ecclesiastes 4.12 says, If one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So here is a, a I, I picture a wrestling match, or maybe a mugging. Uh, if one prevail against him, then two will, will not just, you know, stay with him, they'll overcome him, and then the three against the one will break up the fight, I guess you would say. So two are better than one, and three is even better. And a church full, or a church parking lot full, it is even better. Helen Keller put it very simply, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. We can always accomplish more together than we can on our own. It's just like the geese that fly. Uh, a single bird can fly just a short distance, but when a flock gets together and they make that V formation, they can fly long distances together. They pick each other up. They, they honk and, and encourage one another. Well, we see the same thing happen with human beings. We're always able to accomplish more together than when we are alone. I heard a story a long time ago about Jimmy Durante. He was a great entertainer a generation or more ago. And he was invited to come to be a part of a show for the World, World War II veterans. And he told them that his schedule was very busy and he could afford only a few minutes, but if they wouldn't mind his doing one short monologue and immediately leaving for his next performance, uh, then he would be glad to come. And of course, the show's director agreed happily. And when Mr. Durante got up on the stage, something very interesting happened. He went through the short monologue that he had promised, but then he kept going. And the applause grew louder and louder, and he just kept going and going. And pretty soon, he had been up there 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And then finally, at 30 minutes, he takes his final bow, and he leaves the stage. Well, the manager stopped him on the way out. He said, I thought you only had a few minutes. What happened? He said, well, you're right, I, I did, but I, I'll show you the reason that I stayed. And he pulled the manager around to the side of the stage and said, look down there in the front row. He said, there in the front row are two men who both lost an arm in the war. 
One lost his right arm, the other lost his left arm, and they sat together and were able to applaud, to clap. And he said, I saw that and I just could not um, just quit. And he said they were just applauding so loudly and cheerfully. Well, beloved, that story makes me think about the church. When we join together, we can do more than we can do on our own. Even in this time of social distancing, we need all to gather and to gather faithfully. And I hope that you will participate in that drive-in service Sunday at 10 a.m. It's so encouraging to see so many of you each and every week. I'm also brokenhearted that some have never come. Some have only come a time or two. If you can't come, we can understand that. But join us online. Let us know you listen. I'm thrilled to see families with their kids out there each and every Sunday. Uh, and that's wonderful. I mean, absolutely wonderful. If you can only watch online, please continue to do so. In fact, right now, um, whether you like the sermon or not, hit that share. See over to the right on the bottom, it says share and it's got that little arrow. And this will help the, the message go out. And every time you see a devotion or a sermon online from the church, hit that share button. I mean, liking them is good, but sharing them will help the word of God get out. And, uh, and that's really the reason that we have church. I pray that you would commit to being a part of this gathering, Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. Or be committed to the gathering where you live. I know that online we're reaching people from across the United States. We've even got some in the Philippines now that are watching and listening. Um, you just never know how, how this is going to impact uh, the world. So help us out by, by watching, by sharing, by committing yourself to being a part of it. There may be somebody today that has never made a decision for Jesus Christ to be saved. And that's the first step for everyone. If you're watching by the Facebook page, there's a way to message, message me, message me, I guess it's called. Um, do that and, and I will get on there and help you and lead you through some Bible verses that will help you to where you can know Jesus loves you and that he can save you, he can forgive you. He wants you to know that your life matters. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, as we close, we do pray for the church, and not just Mount Pisgah, but the church everywhere. And it's a hard time, a struggling time right now for churches as, as we're looking to do what's next. Um, you need to lead us, guide us, direct us. Things are tough financially on everybody. So I pray, oh God, that you would meet the needs of our people, that you would help them to reach out beyond themselves and get the word of God out, even in a time where we don't have in-person worship. They can share this message and other messages with people to help them to know you as Savior. God bless each and every one of them. I pray it in Jesus' name for his sake and glory. Amen. God bless you. Thank you again for coming.